All right, hello everybody and welcome back to another modern gameplay video. Um, if you missed the last video, yes, you can see that I don't have my green screen yet. I just moved into my new apartment. This is my first week back to content creation. And uh, yeah, my green screen is coming in the mail. So I can't do that big, crazy edited intro I do where I'm front of the green screen, have the cards on the side, you know. So we're going right live on twitch.tv slash mavendragon. The link is down below. We like to stream Magic the Gathering all day long on Mondays. I'm gonna start doing more MTG streams throughout the week. So come through, hit that subscribe, not that subscribe button. I mean, if you want, but hit that uh, follow button catch a stream, hang out, and you can even play against me if you'd like. I welcome that as well. Um, so yeah, jumping right into the stream to record this intro because of lack of a green screen. So we are playing some Mardu Gorios today. Now, this deck, man, I'm not even prepared. I have to check who, who created this deck. This Mardu Gorios deck was created by Char Aznabel, who took it to a 5-0 finish in an MTGO Modern League. I had this deck queued up for quite a while. Um, he took it to a 5 0 league, or they took it to a 5 0 league, probably like over a month ago. And uh, yeah, finally get to play it now that I'm back and settled in. Um, so it's a, it's got Gorios and Footsteps of the Gorios. Those are the reanimation spells, six total reanimation spells. The idea of the deck is to ditch either Obsidat or Gristlebrand to get them back. So when you Gorios back Gristle's brand, obviously you can like get in for seven, draw seven cards, basically for no downside. You don't lose any life from doing that because you're going to get that lifelink. So just a huge advantage to make sure that you have enough gasoline to win. Um, now, Obsidat has a pretty interesting interaction with Gorios and or footsteps of the Gorios. Now, Obsidat has a trigger that says at the beginning of your end step, you may exile Obsidat if you do return to the battlefield at your next upkeep and it gains haste. So Gorios Vengeance and Footsteps of the Gorios will say at the end step, you have to sacrifice the creature or exile that creature. So you don't get to keep it, but you can stack it so that Obsidat uses its trigger to exile itself instead of Gorios or Footsteps making you lose it. So you get to permanently keep an Obsidat. Our ways of discarding it are Lightning Axe, which is a kill spell, plus you get to discard a card. We got um, Collective Brutality, which obviously you can escalate it with all those modes by discarding cards. You can even discard stuff like Lingering Souls to that as well. We have one copy of Ransack the Lab, which is like an Anticipate, but puts cards in your graveyard, as well as Egon, God of Death, but not really Egon. We're using it for the um, Throne of Death version. So it's a one mana rock that says, um, at your upkeep, you get to mill a card. So hopefully we're gonna mill these big old bombs and stuff. And then, of course, Merchant of the Veil is our Faithless Looting replacement. For one mana haggle, we get to draw a card and discard a card. We get to loot. Loot one of those away. Gorios are back on the second turn. That's the nut draw. We got two bolts for removal. And we got, of course, Inquisition and Thoughtseize. Because in modern nowadays, you can't have a black deck without Inquisition and Thoughtseize. It's pretty much a staple. Oh yeah, that's right. The main one, Magmatic Channeler. Strong dude can be a, a good backup wind condition alongside Lingering Souls because he can turn into a 4-4, but yeah, he's a looter. He can discard um, one of those big bombs, exile a top two, looking for a reanimation spell. So really perfect for this deck. So quite an enabler. We have 21 total lands and out of the sideboard, we got two more Lingering Souls for additional win conditions if it's the grindy game and the opponent might have some kind of hate for reanimation. Um, we got two copies of Cling to Dust for Graveyard Hate two copies of a fatal push for removal plague engineer for tribal a brain for both removal and also artifact hate cleansing wildfire for tron kaya's guile um i don't know specifically what this is for but it's pretty versatile um maybe you can just bring it in if we need an additional removal spell or a way to hate out boggles and then of course two copies of wear and tear for additional naturalized effects and with that let's go on to the gameplay Hope you enjoy. And before we get into it, a huge thanks to all of our supporters over on Patreon for making this channel possible. Their names have been scrolling down below. And if you would like to help monetize this channel so I can keep doing this kind of content, you can find the Patreon link down below in the description. But if you'd like to show your support for free, leaving a like, comment, and subscribe is very much appreciated. And be sure to check out our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders for all of your Magic the Gathering needs. For the best in MTG and MTG accessories, check out tcgplayer.com through our decklist link down below. Anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And if you want to play some magic online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code that's on screen right now to save 15% and you can rent and play all the magic decks you want. And with that, let's get on to the video. Hope you enjoy. 
Got a game here against S Sodoms 930, and we won the die roll. Gonna be on the draw of the play here with some Mardu uh, Obsidat, and that looks really good. Mardu Gorios. We can turn one, um, you know, haggle away this Obsidat and turn two Gorios. It, so we're passing, we're gonna do this EOT, and the opponent is not gonna see it coming. So please, just do not Thoughtseize us. Anything but a Thoughtseize we will take. I don't care what the heck they do. If it's not like a Relic of Progenitus or like anything like that. Yeah, all right. We are Gucci as Flames. Fetch and get... We can get a basic Mountain, actually. All right, Haggle. Discard an Obsidat. Untap, Shock Godless Shrine, and Gorio's back the Obsidat. Boom. Bring you for two, get in there for five. Now, how is Zoo going to beat a turn two Obsidat on the draw? <laughs> we will find out more after this. Welcome back, Clara. Another Pell Collector into, let me guess, a Hex Drinker. Dexing Devil. So they're going to get Dub's counters here. Which is okay. I can still beat that. I will take the four. Alright, taking three. Give me back my Obsidat. Bolts, Yield, Pelt Collector. Play a Blood Crypt. Um, do I shock it? Probably not. I have no reason to play Channeler here. I mean, I do, but... I don't think it's worth the two life right now because Obsidat gets it. I just literally exile him and if the opponent can't gain life, which they probably can't, then we just win on our upkeep. The opponent's going to have to kill us here, which I don't know how they can do it if they don't have Burning Tree, Burning Tree, Bushwhacker. So let's see if they actually have Burning Tree, Burning Tree, Bushwhacker. Would that even do it? That'd be eight plus four. Yeah, that wouldn't even do it. Yeah. All right. Sweet. We're going down to the board against Zoo. Give me a Braids. I need some removal. Give me the life gain removal spell in Kaya's Guile. Oh, don't give me Cleansing Wildfire. Uh, Plague Engineer is an annoying blocker. It can maybe ETB kill something and then be a Death Touch blocker. Push is coming in. Lingering Souls are just chum blockers. I really don't need them here. Ransack the Labs always filler. I can cut a Thought Seize on the draw. I don't even like Thoughtseize here. I think I'm just going to straight up cut it. I guess I'll bring in Plague Engineer just because they're annoying death touchers. And uh, I got to bring something back in, so... I guess I will keep a Lingering Souls for some chump blockage. So fan, thank you so much for gifting a tier 1 sub. To Jason David N O S O Java Dad, Jason David backwards. Um, thank you so much. And Jason David, if you are here, be sure to thank Sposu fan. I remember somebody. Um, oh dang it, we have a bot. Somebody gifted you a sub the other days. Um, O S U fan, it was like two days ago. So thank you very much for continuing the love. And sending that gift sub on to another. That is very generous of you, and I appreciate it. Let's keep this. And now the opponent's for sure are gonna have like Scoos or Tormod script or Relic or something. So, but if they don't, I can go for a turn three Gristlebrand. I can just go draw um to hand size, ditch Gristlebrand, and then turn wait a couple turns in Gorios and But that's not that logical of a play considering Gristlebrand doesn't straight up win the game. All he does is just hit for seven and draw me seven.
Ooh, all right, change of plans. We're actually gonna go to hand size and ditch Obsidat. It's funny how getting back Obsidat is much better than getting back Grizzlebrand. It's weird, but it works. Firelit Thicket. Oh, baby, a double. Another Gorios, just in case. All right, let's get out the mountain so we can bolt something. They're shocking and playing Bone Crusher, I'm guessing. Ball Lightning. All right, well, I guess I'm going to bolt a Ball Lightning. We're gonna get double you know what i think i bolt the experiment one and then i let them hit me for for eight because the ball lightning is gonna die on its own yeah let's hit the experiment one here because it has the ability to regenerate that'll be annoying later hell collector can't regenerate but it will get bigger so maybe in that case i should have hit it Shock and Gorio's back. Obsidat. And this should be enough to get there if they don't have an answer to Obsidat. I don't think they can race the drain and gain for two every turn. That's why Clothis is a pretty nutty card. Because Cloth has drains and gains for two every turn as well. And it's just a three drop enchantment that's indestructible. So Clothis is very, very good. I would say he's underplayed and underrated, but. He actually does see play, but not as much as he did a couple months ago. People like stop playing him that much, and I think that people should keep on playing him. Like Jun should keep on playing Clothis because blood braiding into a Clothis, that's devastating. Hello, Jason David. And they got four mana and nothing to do. Looking good for me. Alrighty, well, it's Inquisition and see that land they got in hand, probably. It is just a land. Play a Bloodstained Mire, go to combat, attack for five. And exile opposite at, your go. I wonder if I can footsteps there, creature. Your graveyard. Okay, there's a relic. A little bit late on that relic. They ought to just crack it now for card advantage because they're in desperation mode. Yeah, they have to crack it now. I don't think anything can get it for them here. They're staying back to chump with Pell Collector. Go to combat, get in there for five. And exile lobs it out and I win on my upkeep. They're going to have to get like a Nosson and Bailoff or a Thrag Tusk to stay alive. Oh, they found a bolt. Oh, wow. That's what they needed. All right. Well, guess what I got? <laughs> guess what I got? Sorry, opponent. It had to happen. GG. We took down Zoo pretty convincingly. That was nice. Obsidad, just like, if you're going up against aggro in general, Gorios in back in Obsidat will win. It's pretty hard to beat. Sweet. Got a game here against ZLS704, our longtime opponent, yet again. And this hand is going to be a keep. Playing some Mardu Gorios. Sam, thank you so much for the resubscribe for 19 months. Welcome back and enjoy the emotes yet again. That's a long time. You've been here since kind of the start like near the start you came really early so thank you for being here all this time never been a big fan of mlp well maybe haven't given it a chance oh look at that misty that looks nice so people who like a lot of people just don't give a chance to mlp because it's mlp 
but once you actually sit down and like watch it like from the start from the start like go to i think there's a it's called mlpstream.org where you can watch all the episodes for free and you can like um yeah just start from the very beginning and watch it through and you'll get dragged in and it's literally like it's addicting as an anime and at a certain point it starts to feel like an anime and uh yeah it it's it's really once you start to watch it you can see why there's such a big worldwide cult following for mlp and um the whole brony community and pegasister community and stuff you you'll see why that exists after you watch it and see how great it is it's like on the surface it it doesn't seem appealing to like get into but once you get into it you're like man i should have watched this a long time ago and then you're gonna want to make your own pony sona Alrighty, let's just go for Lingering Souls. Oh, soon. Soon 12, we're gonna have... I think I'll have the Discord calls for um, the patrons on uh, Wednesday... Tuesday nights? Tuesday nights when we do the Patreon streams. MLP is fun, but likes parts of the fan base aren't separable like every yeah like every fandom there's always going to be some toxicity in one small corner of it but don't pay attention to the trolls like there's some people who try to bring it all down but there's there's good and there's bad like you know the furry community for example there's there's some people that will give it a bad name but don't pay attention to them because that's all people from the outside see is is the bad part of it like you got to look at the good don't always look at the negative. Look at the positive, because that's what matters. Dried of Elysian Grove. I need to discard effect for this Obsidat. Oh, that's a Gristlebrand boy. All right. Let's just Gorios back this Gristlebrand. Um, let's keep the red source untapped. And let's go to combat. We could die next turn to escape shift, so I have to deal with this dryad here, no matter what. Draw seven. Um, did not get away, so draw seven more. Did I still not get away? I have no way to kill this, this dryad. All right, I do. I can double bolt it. Yeah. I can double bullet, so shock, bolt, bolt, go to the end step and discard a bunch of junk. Discard Obsidat, Gristlebrand, Obsidat, Footsteps, um, Black Cleave Cliffs, Obsidat, um, Merchant of the Veil, vale, Polluted Delta. And then next turn we'll just be able to Gorios back. Oh, do I not have a Gorios? I don't. All right. Well, there's another Obsidat there. They have another Dryad. Maybe I should have drawn more. Yeah, maybe I should have drawn seven more. Well, I can footsteps back a Gristlebrand and draw seven and try to find another answer to the Dryad. And I can thought seize them too. Um, I guess I do that, so I think I'm going to keep the red black source up again in case I draw a lava axe, so footsteps back the Gristlebrand. Give me a lava axe, dude. I already drew half my deck. Please, just give me one. Wow, did not get it. 
did not get an answer to a 2-4. I drew half my library. I'm gonna die to a single mount. I'm dead now. I'm dead once, like, literally, they can crack their Sakura to kill us. Like, if I lose any more life, I'm dead. This is nuts. All right, well, I guess the best I can do is Inquisition then. Can't believe I like all my stuff was on the bottom of the library. Like I couldn't find an answer. Well, looks like we're dead because they can just summoners pack for a Titan and yeah, we're going to die. All right, so sideboard time. Bring in Cleansing Wildfire so we can try to hit those uh, Valakuts. Bring in Wear and Tear so we can try to hit those Dryads. Maybe I bring in Push to go with our fetches to kill the Dryads. I think maybe that's a good thing to do. Because we just can't let Dryads sit. I think I'll just leave it like this, though. Maybe Kaya's Guile's not bad, but if they have a Sakura sitting there, it'd be a little annoying. But it could be good. They probably won't really have Graveyard Hate. It'll maybe be Relic. And I won't have an answer for it. But all right, I don't think Lingering Souls is all that good here. And uh, Bolts don't really do a whole lot. And uh, Ransack the Lab is filler. And then cut one Merchant of the Veil. I mean, Merchant of the Veil is the best... Uh, the best one. I think I'll cut one Egon. I think the Throne of Death's a pretty filler. Hey, Crash. You're hungry? There's like nothing to eat here. Send help. Well, order something on... Uh, um, I just learned that grocery stores do delivery, so just go look up one of those apps and put your address in it and order some groceries. Because right now, where I, I just moved into my new place and I don't have a car yet, so I have to order groceries from the grocery store for delivery. All right, let's mulligan the one lander. Let's keep that one. That looks better. I do have a way to ditch Obsidat. So this is turn three Obsidat. So it's not bad. And I even got Inquisition backup. Um, I unfortunately am going to have to ditch one of my lands. So let's ditch the swamp because I want my colors. Because I need all of this other stuff. So I have to ditch a land. Shock here and Inquisition. Veil of Summer and Summoner's Pact. Um, well, I guess we don't care about Veil of Summer, right? Probably Summoner's Pact. So they don't go get like a Sakura Tribe Elder and ramp. Because it looks like they're a little bit stuck on mana. They got Turn Timber Symbiosis and um, a Valica and a Misty. Like they have four lands. Wait, five? They have triple Turn Timber? Quad Turn? Oh, they got double Turn Timber. All right, Shock, get out Magmatic Channeler, and next turn is the turn. They don't do delivery at midnight. Rip. Where are we at again? Like Germany? Russia? Denmark? Iceland? Belarus? Estonia? Macedonia? Wait. Czech Republic? Slovenia? Serbia? Ukraine? Czechia? All right, I was, that was my fifth try. Fifth try. We got there, boys. All right, let's loot. Obsidat. Oh, we get a free Gorios. Don't mind if I do. All right, cast this on Obsidat. No! Wait, what? It doesn't do anything. They can just cantrip. All right, now I have to stack this correctly, so don't click so fast. 
So stack this one first, and then this one will go. Yeah, there we go. Yes, and then screw you, Gorios. We're going to put you away. Czechia is nice. And Slovakia and Austria, they're all pretty similar, similar countries. I want to learn German. Out of all the, the, the European languages, I think that I like the sound of German the most. All the sfzzzzz sounds and the, the, the oo sounds. It just sounds really cool. Um, but I always wanted to learn Polish too. I, I like how Polish sounds because Polish in a way sounds like Japanese. I've always said that it really it really sounds kind of Japanese and it's pretty sick. But I don't know. I feel like I, I would want to learn um, probably German. Um, collective brutality. Uh, can we get lethal here? If I if they if I swing and they take it. No, wait. I think I just have to brutality duress mode, make sure they don't have anything nuts. I can take a turn timber from them, so it's like basically taking a land drop. Um yeah, let's go to combat. Get in there with Obsidat. They are taking it. Collective brutality on duress mode. Actually, let's do it on two modes. Um drain and gain them and duress them so that when Obsida enters the battlefield, we'll win. So, duress you, drain you. Ditching a Magmatic Channeler. Take your turn timber, you got prime time in Graft Digger's Cage. And yes, I'm gonna exile Obsida, and when it enters back in, we win. So, do your worst. Oh, they're finding Tom though. Gonna go watch a Joshua Weissman video. I don't know who that is, but have fun. Get ready for the grammatical grammatical genders and a bunch of weird conjugations and articles. All right, I don't know what that is, but I'm sure I'll find out if I do learn German. When German and Polish sounds, when German and Polish sound, sounds at the same time, Sabaton starts playing in the background. I don't listen to Sabaton. Look at that prime time. That's so weird. Six triggers. Oh, I'm dead. Cool. How did they? Oh, yeah, they searched for Tom. That's how they found enough. And they found a basic off the top or something. All right, GG. Wait, was I dead? They got six triggers and I was at 17. That should be 18 damage. I, I just don't think that Moto loaded this damage yet, but I'm pretty sure I took it and I'm pretty sure I was dead. But that was six triggers and I was at 18. So I don't know if I preemptively scooped there. I know I'm sure somebody's going to let me know in the comment section down below there. Somebody's going to click rewind on this video and watch that back, but I'm pretty sure I was dead there. If not, then I literally just scooped a game that I won. So, GG to ZLS704 yet again. Got a game here against Sekura. We won the die roll, gonna be in the play with some Mardu Gorios, and that is lacking a red source. But if I draw a red source, I can do the turn three Gorios. I think the upside's worth, because it's a decent hand. I just need to draw a land that's red which there's many of. I think everything, every other land that we could draw is red. What state are you living in these days, Utah? I've been talking about it on stream for three years now and I'm finally here, so I'm happy about that. It's been a while since I've caught your stream. Sweet, thank you Van Wedge for coming back. I clearly remember you. It is great to see you again. How have you been? All right, we're going to escalate two modes here, kill a creature and duress mode. And ditching Obsidat. So we're going up against Blitz so far. Yeah, it's burn. 
It's Blitz. It's Burn. It's Burn. All right. So I think we're going to... Um, I don't care about the Mana Channeler anymore. I think I'll just take Boros Charm because it's the most damage. Double Bolt Searing Blaze. I'm not too worried about our future here. I think that the opponent's hand is not very good. And uh, I have time to set up what I want to do. Actually, I can Gorios right now. What am I talking about? And Goriosing back a Obsidat here straight up wins. They're not going to beat this. I mean, they can double bolt Obsidat, but at that point, they're losing all the burn they got. And they're just going to be left with the Searing Blaze and a land and one unknown. So I'm not too worried. Yeah, they're scooping it up from that. <laughs> got them by the balls there. All right, so game two, I'm bringing in Kyle's Guile because it has a mode that can gain four life and make him sack a creature. And Cling to Dust can gain three life. So I can like kill their creature, then gain three life. I think I'll do that. But you know what? No, that's not worth. It's no value in that. But I'm going to bring in Push. Um, Wear and Tear can hit Eidolon. A Braid is a good cheap removal spell. I think I'll just bring in this stuff and I'll cut... Egons. I feel like Egons are always filler. You know, what if I don't want Thoughtseize? Thoughtseize is actually fine against Burn, but it's not the most impactful thing in the world, so maybe I just keep in the Egons and cut the Thoughtseizes. I'd be cool with that. All right, let's do it. What you been up to all this time, Van Witch? Alrighty, uh, we have the Magmatic Channeler to ditch the Gristlebrand and Gorio's it back, so I'm gonna keep. I almost want to just like draw up to eight and then ditch a Gristlebrand to a hand, and then just like turn like turn three Gorios it back because I feel like if I play a Magmatic Channeler, I won't be able to untap with it. I feel like the opponent will, um, the opponent will deal with it deal with the channeler. So, you know, I am just going to go to hand size here and discard Obsidat, actually. I want Obsidat over Gristlebrand. They're going to Lava Spike us. Lava Spike us again? And do they even... They don't even have a second land. All right, sweet. All right, let's say Meyer go. Jamming cube teaching high schoolers. Nice. Jamming cubes is a good thing. I finally have an LGS I can go to again. I'm very hyped about that because it's been over, like, it's been a year since I've been able to go to an LGS because they were all closed down because of the pandemic and whatnot. So I'm very excited that I can finally go to an LGS again because there are LGSs around here and they're open. Um, so yeah, that's pretty hype. And they are just giving out vaccinations here as well. So I just got to pick an appointment and go get my vaccination. And it's a, it's a pretty overall safe state. Wait, why did I not go for it there? I was talking to chat and just completely overlooked it. What the heck? All right, well, we will footsteps. Yeah, I was I was talking to Chad. I didn't Gorio's last turn. Well, I don't know if that's going to cost us a game, but if they don't have a skull crack here. Oh, yeah, they don't. That's right. They're stuck on one. So this should be good enough, I would say. Exile Obsidat and pass. No skull crack means we probably win. Yeah, they're they're just been they just been stuck on one the whole time. That's what you get for playing an 18 land burn deck. Maybe if they're even playing like 17 or 16 lands. Because I do see budget burn, they don't really have fetches. So if you don't run fetches, you can probably get away with 16 lands. I could see it. Alright, well, let's abrade the Swift Spear. And get down a channeler so we can get a Gristlebrand next turn. 
Yep, they scoop it up. The Obsidat is way too much for them to deal with. Drain and gain for two every turn. Burn is not going to keep up with that, especially on a one lander. So we took down Burn. It was a little bit of a budget burn, but when you think about it, they're losing nothing other than the mana base. It is still the same deck, pretty much. So GG. Got a game here against Kaiba Boy. And we're going to be on the draw here with some Mardu Gorios. And I think this is going to be a mulligan because it's a one lander and the land is in black. So I can't cast Inquisition. So there we go. Um, we can ditch a Gristlebrand with this hand. And I think I'm going to bottom one of my Merchant of the Veils because I already have one. Um, now all I need to do is find a Footsteps or a Gorios Vengeance. Sh should be decent enough. Elvish Mystics. We're going up against Elves. I think I'm straight up just going to bolt that, that Elvish Mystic. I think bolting the birds is always the correct play. It's a very high priority play overall. This Migmatic Channeler should give us a good chance at finding what we need. Heritage Druid into nothing. All right, there's Obsidat. Sweet. Get down Migmatic Channeler. Pass turn. But the thing is, most aggro decks cannot beat a reanimated Obsidat because it's just... The drain and gain it really gets there, but Elves is a deck that goes huge, so it can beat it. So that's the scary part here. Really hoping to channel her into a removal spell, actually, rather than a reanimation spell. So ditch a card, Obs it at. There's a Gorios. We'll take the Gorios here. Gorios back. Raid and gain, play a Bloodstained Mire, go to combat and get in there for five. Pass turn, conserve our life total. Opponent's down to 13. So if I went for Gristlebrand instead, I could have drawn seven cards and found a removal spell to kill that Arc Druid, so maybe that would have been more smart. But there was only one bolt and two more um, lava axes left in the deck, so there was a good chance we actually didn't find a removal spell. The opponent is going to triple tap their Heritage Druids and tap that Blooming Marsh and cast a four drop watch. Yep, here it goes. Realm Walker, oh, here we go. No attacks, actually. Go and get a Sacred Foundry. Obsidat comes back, drains and gains, down to 11. We're up to 21. Discard a Gristlebrand. There's an Egon and a Collective Brutality. Well, we'll take Collective Brutality here. And let's Brutality off our two modes to Drain and Gain and kill Arc Druid. Arc Druid and their face. Ditching a Mountain. They're going to float five. Oh, do they have a Coco? Is their last card a Coco? Why didn't you do that on your turn? You could have kept on going off. It's so weird. This person seems a little new to elves because that's a questionable play in my opinion. Yikes, now their arc druid lives. I mean, they did get us, can't blame them for that, but I think they should have main phase Coco there. Well, I can't really swing here, so. I guess we're just passing. I can I can haggle and ditch this swamp and maybe find another reanimation spell. Ransack the lab. Well, I am dead. Even if I like, yeah, like 
there's nothing I can do. I could block the shaman of the pack, but that'd put us in a really bad spot. So let's go into sideboarding, and we have plague engineers to bring in here. We have Kaya's Guile, a braid, and push. Lingering Souls is doo doo. Cut the lingering souls. Cut ransack the lab. The opponent's not gonna have graveyard hate. We don't have to worry about that. Egon's pretty mediocre for getting stuff in our graveyard, so we can cut that. And I guess since we need to cut one more thing, let's cut a Thoughtseize. Um because I like everything else we got. So run it like that. Hey, Crash, I can't reveal that right now because we're mid-recording and I don't want to spoil it for YouTube. So I'll let you know in between games. Um, this hand looks um, a little awkward because we don't have anything to reanimate despite having two reanimation spells, but we do have one removal spell. I don't know if that's good enough, but I feel like the more we mulligan this deck, the less very... Our, our, our chances drastically lesser, lessen the more we mulligan. I feel like we have to keep as many cards as we can. So let's just hold on to this haggle to see if we just top deck a good creature. The ditch. You know, this maybe should have like one... I was going to say one Elish Norn, but probably not. There's the obs at. All right, well, let's abrade Mr. Lanwar Elves here. All right, obs at, take two. Can you do it this time? Lanwar Elves, and they're stuck on one mana? Ooh, sick. All right. Shock, haggle. It's obs at, Gorios. Drain and gain. Get in for five. And exile. All right. Can Obsidad do the job this time? War Masters here, but they still didn't hit their land. Get Obsidad back. Drain and gain. They're at 11. I'm at 22. Hardcast Merchant of the Veil. Play a Bloodstained Mire, go to combat, attack for five. They're taking it down to 11, exile. Oh, Heritage Druid, here we go. Here we go, it's time to go off, boys. Oh, nothing. I'm very, very surprised they have nothing. I, I could have swear they would just like triple tap there with Heritage Druid and play a three drop or something. But they're down to four. We're up to 24. And Merchant of the Veil. Well, I guess let's fetch. Get a swamp. Go to combat. See if they want to quadruple block on Obsidat here. Also going to get in with Merchant. Because if Merchant connects, that means that... Oh, wait. What do they got? Oh, they have a Coco. I was going to say, if Merchant connects, that means we win on our upkeep. But they got a bunch of Lords here. Maybe if they get, like, Shaman of the Pack plus a Lord... Or, wait, wait, wait. No, no. Shout of the Pack plus an, an Elvish Mystic. That's not terrible, but they can trade off for my Merchant of the Veil and then chump Obsidat. Oh, they also get a, an Elf token, so they don't. They can just chump chump. So my hair is annoying me, and it's also kind of awkward on this side too, because sometimes it doesn't straighten correctly. 
What if I just like put my hair over my ear like that? All right, they did trade off here. Let's haggle. Ditching polluted Delta. Play Black Cleave Cliffs and Hardcast Merchant. Go like that. Did I put this over my ear too? Just put both my my sides of my hair over my ear. Does that look? Does that look weird? All right, the opponent could very well do a million things here. All right, put my hair of my ear here, put it over here. Okay, you know what? What if I keep the this side over my ear, but I took this side down? That's probably better, right? But then I have this little this little bump right here. It's just sticking out. This little piece of hair is just protruding a little bit. Wrap it all into a chignon. What's a chignon? They have an elvish arc druid. They make a token off war master. It's a ponytail that you curl upward into itself. Oh, I've never done that. I've never known how to do that. I just do basic ponytails. I'm very normal. I take this hair tie here and I just make a ponytail with this hair tie. Oh, it's got double lord. Obsidat's coming back. If I can find any burn spell, Collider Brutality, another Obsidat, lots of things do it here. A bolt. Oh, look, another Obsidat. What do you know? All right, cool. Um, Let's go to combat. Um, or let's actually just do that now, I guess. Because there's no reason in going to combat and wasting time. Sacred Foundry. White, what, black. White, white, black, black. Whatever. Of that number two. Drain and gain. And we got him. All right, we're going to game number three here. And on the draw against elves, not ideal. Um, but it is what it is, so let's do it. Uh, Glac Gla Glaucoma. Giacomo Mariotti. Thank you so much for the prime sub. Welcome and enjoy the emotes. And every time, oh, what the heck? A hype train is close, it says. It says one more person needs to either sub, gift, or use bits to create a hype train. And somebody can get the, the hype train conductor badge if anybody wants to do something like sub, gift, or use bits. They, and Crash is the one. Now you got yourself a hype train um, badge, I'm pretty sure. Crash, thank you so much for the hundred tickle bitties. Wait. Did that not count because you were the last one to do an action? I don't think it counted for you because you just did an action and it needs somebody else to do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, every time somebody prime subs, I always gotta say I really appreciate those in particular because you could use that for free once per month anywhere on Twitch. And the fact you chose to use it here makes me feel special. So thank you so much. And Crash, thank you so much for the 200 tickle bitties yet again. Appreciate. Thanks, Fred. Alrighty, I need red. There it is! Jason David is the hype train conductor. The hundred tickle bitties. And now we have a level one hype train. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate that. Yesterday, y'all made it up to a level four hype train. That was insane. We're at a level one right now. Um, all right, so what do I want to take from my opponent's hand? Probably Scooze, right? Stops reanimation. But they're just going to destroy us with, like, everything they got. 
But Scooze is a logical take because it hates out our plan. Happy! <laughs> Crash gifting a tier one sub to Happy. Hey, Happy. Are you here? Are you lurking? Are you lurking or are you twerking? It's great to see you again, Happy, if you are here. Massive hugs to you. And I miss you. And be sure to thank Crash for gifting that sub. And thank you so much, Crash, for your generosity. We're at 81% in the level one hype trade. All right, shock here. And I guess we're gonna collect brutality and do two modes. Or do I do three modes? Let's do three modes. Um, wait. We know they don't have any Eastern Sorceries. They got double Dwinans and Elvish War Master. Cancel. Let's just do two modes. Um, kill a creature, drain and gain. I guess we're killing Elvish War Master and hitting them. Ditching an obs at. Ditching the Oh, another Elvish War Master plus a Dwarven's Elite to make a huge board state. Where the heck are the Plague Engineers, dude? I brought in two Plague Engineers. This is why I was saying, every time I play Plague Engineer, I'm always saying you want at least three, but probably four, in any black sideboard that you play in modern, unless you're like some kind of ad nauseum control deck and don't care about having creatures. There it is. There it is. But I don't have my third mana. Wow, this is nuts. Please, opponent, just whatever you do, just please don't find a Lord effect. I need this Plague Engineer down. Don't find it. We're right there. Just giving you the same generosity you give all your fans with your time. Oh, thank you so much for the kind words. I don't like to say the word fans though, because I don't like to think that highly of myself. I, I I like to think of myself as just your guys' friend. I'm just I'm just a friend providing you guys content. We're all equal level of of people here. And uh I don't I don't like to think highly of myself as like the the one above everyone as the the idol to the fans. I feel like that's a self-centered thing. I like to just think of you guys as friends. Friends and family, exactly. And look at that. Off the top of the library, they found the heckin' Lord. They found it right off the top, right before we got our third land for Plague Engineer. I was about to sweep them. Oh man, what a luck sack. Or not a luck sack, but I mean, yes, because they found the Lord. But also, we just got Mana Screwed, and uh, Mana Screw strikes again. I usually don't like to keep Mana Screwed in videos, but it was a good game up until this point, so you know what? Maybe I'll keep it. Maybe I won't. We'll see. All right, so let's talk about some Mardu Gorios. I'm very, very impressed with Obsidat. Obsidat is just amazing to Gorios back. And because, uh, like, he, when he Gorios him back, he most of the time wins. Because, like, it's very hard to beat that 5-5 that con consistently ETBs and, and drains and gains for two. Like, he's very evasive. He doesn't die to sweepers or sorcery speed removal. And instant speed removal, like bolt and push, do not deal with him. Basically, Path to Exile is the only common thing that would hit Obsidat. Other than that, he's there to stay. And he's pretty thick. Now, Grizzlebrand, on the other hand, is a card that I wasn't really impressed with. Honestly. Like, he just... He was, like, hit them for seven... And you draw seven cards, which is good, but there was some times where it's like, we're not contributing to our board state. And at that point, it's not really helping us. Like, yeah, we draw seven cards. Cool. But now we're just tapped out with no board still. And the opponent gets to commit more to the board. And our deck is full of setup, like, you know, Inquisition and Thoughtseize for, for their their hand and, and then discard spells like Haggle and Channeler. Like, you draw seven cards, but yeah, you're going to draw a bunch of jank that just helps you get more Bristlebrands in the future. Like, you're not drawing into a lot of good stuff. Like, you want to draw more removal, bolts, push, collective brutality. And um, you're just not drawing enough good stuff to, to make that seven cards valuable. So 
If we're not committing to the board, then I don't really like it. So I feel like Obsidat's the only good one there. I could see this deck being just like commit around Obsidat and then like having a bunch of discard strategies like, you know, the Haggle's fine, the, the Magmatic Channeler's great, and only have just Gorios and Obsidat cut footsteps too much. And just like, if you have them both together, cool. You can use them like that. If it's late in the game, you can hard cast an Obsidat, cool. If you don't have the Obsidat and you have a Gorios, it's useless. Just ditch it. Ditch it to a Brutality. Ditch it to a Channeler. Ditch it to, like, whatever. Lightning Axe. Just ditch it to something because you don't need it. Like, it could just literally, this two-card package could just be something that you toss into Martyr Midrange just to have it. Like, the deck doesn't need to be completely based around it like this is. And that would make you much less susceptible to graveyard hate. So in the sideboard, you could easily sideboard out of graveyard-based strategies and just go more committed to Lingering Souls. And and also maybe you can go more mid-range, you put more removal and put Season Pyromancer as a way to ditch the Obsidat. You can do that as well. There's Cuttable Filler, like Ransack the Lab. And I, I would want to go up in Brutality and run more Lingering Souls so I have a good, strong backup win condition. And those things would go very well alongside a reanimated Obsidat because while he does do really good in his own, he doesn't straight up just win the game on his own. I think he needs a little bit of support. Um, maybe supportive removal or just fellow win conditions. Egon is honestly really filler as well. He he felt like just a throw in just so that this person who built this deck could try him, but he honestly doesn't feel like he belongs, like milling one card at a time. If I, if I play a one mana artifact that's just milling myself, I'd rather just play Shriekhorn. Why not just play Shriekhorn? It, it mills even more than this does, quicker than this does. Like you mill four right off the bat, whereas this one you're only gonna mill one in one turn. Whereas Shriekhorn I could mill four. Like play it, tap it, upkeep, tap it, and boom, four cards, turn two Gorios, boom. So that's only if you wanted to commit to this plan still, the, Go the Gristlebrand plan, but. Yeah, there's definitely big changes I would do to this deck, and I wouldn't play Grizzleband, just these. And uh, yeah, I guess that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below. It's totally free and really helps out the channel. But if you wanted to go the extra mile, you can check out our Patreon link down below in the description. Patreon is a platform where you can help to financially support the content creators you love. And a big shout out to all of our current Patreon supporters whose names are on screen right now, and an extra special shout out to our top supporters for the month. And another way to support the channel is by supporting our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders. If you want to play some Magic Online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code that's on screen right now to save 15%, and you can rent and play all the Magic decks you want. It is what I personally use and how I had filmed this video here today. And if you want to pick up some magic cards or anything magic related really, you can pick them up through our deck list link down below. That's our tcgplayer.com link and anything you purchase through there really ups out the channel. They are the best of the best on the internet when it comes to Magic the Gathering singles, sealed product, and accessories. And that's about it. Again, thank you so much for watching the video and I'll catch you in the next one.